They are ghostly relics, abandoned hulks of steel left to haunt municipalities and port authorities, floating graveyards, sometimes appearing in harbors across the country without notice. They're just bringing these ships up here, letting them leach out all their contaminants. You've got, you know, asbestos, you've got lead, you've got things that are, are obviously harming the environment besides all the old fuel on them. A CBC News investigation found one Nova Scotia scrap metal dealer linked to several abandoned ships that together have accounted for hours of legal proceedings and a trail of claims of unpaid berthing fees. One of those ships is the Farley Mowat, a trawler and former anti-sealing ship once owned by the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, now rusting away in Shelburne. We're stuck with it. We have to find a resolution and, as I've said, it's not easy. So far we've been unable at every effort to find a resolution. It's already sunk once, costing hundreds of thousands of dollars to recover. It's not just a problem in Shelburne, it's a problem across the country. A 2012 study done for Transport Canada found nearly 400 derelict and abandoned vessels, everything from small pleasure crafts to ships more than 30 meters long. The main challenge? Finding the current owners because of outdated registration records. Ms. Malcolmson. Today in the House of Commons, this member of Parliament from British Columbia introduced a private member's bill that would change the rules around removing and demolishing abandoned vessels and make one department in charge of wrecks. We will ask the Parliament to work together to designate the Coast Guard to be one-stop shopping so we can eliminate this uncertainty and for coastal communities resolve this problem for once and all. Right now, the Coast Guard only gets involved if there's a risk of diesel or other pollutants harming the marine environment. Even then, it doesn't have the authority to deal with the vessel itself. Bob Murphy, CBC News, Halifax.